Welcome. I'm Keith Sanford, professor of psychology and neuroscience at Baylor University, and this is a history of psychology, racism, and the United States. I call this an illustrated audiobook because I'm going to tell you the story of the history of psychology, racism, and the United States. And along the way, I have many, many pictures to show you. This history will include many things. In part, this is a history of psychology, and the Greek size symbol on the screen is a symbol for psychology. And this will include the story of how psychology was born into an academic world that was steeped in racism, and how psychology promoted racist ideas. It is a story of how, when psychology became a new academic discipline, the academic world was filled with racist theories claiming that white people were superior to others, and how psychology in the United States became popular in part because of a focus on intelligence testing, which was driven by these racist theories and how this led eventually to racist and oppressive laws in the United States. For example, laws involving things like forced sterilization and restrictive immigration quotas, including laws that eventually refused asylum to Jewish people who were attempting to flee from the Holocaust in Nazi Germany. This is also going to be a history of the United States in general. And I will focus on those parts of history that we need to know if we want to gain a full understanding of the issues people face today in our culturally diverse country. Depicted on the screen, there's a picture of a floating white woman holding a book and stringing telegraph wire. This is from a painting titled American Progress, and she represents the idealized way in which history is often told a history told from the perspective of a white world, and it is important to recognize that this is a distorted and racist version of history. My intent is to provide a corrective to this traditional history. So I will focus on the types of historical stories that help us recognize power systems, that is, systems of power that benefit some and oppress many. This will be a story of the history of slavery, the history of genocide against Native Americans, the history of the lynching culture of the early 1900s, the story of racial segregation. It will include the story of the civil rights movement of the 1960s and the attempts by white people to suppress that movement, for example, with things like calls for law and order. It is a story of oppression and racism, symbolized by the slave collar on the screen, and also a story of people struggling against that oppression and racism, symbolized by the raised fist. As I mentioned, this will be a history of many things, and so this will also be a history of science and medicine and of the tragic mistakes people made along the way. It is a story of how highly intelligent and well-intentioned people wanting to help others sometimes cause more harm than good. It is a story of asylums, of bloodletting, of surgeons being opposed to the use of antiseptic surgery, and the story of lobotomies. It's also the story of treatments that people sought when they felt anxious or depressed including a treatment that people called getting magnetized, or another treatment that involved having a phrenologist examine the shape of your head. This is also, at least in a few places, a story of progress, of how people have, at least occasionally, learned from past mistakes. Uh, many techniques that we use in research today were developed to address mistakes from the past. For example, we will consider the story of how statisticians developed techniques that allow us to know how much trust to place in findings from research studies. And at the same time, we will also tell the story of how those very same statisticians were often engaged in petty feuds with each other, and more importantly, they were promoting blatantly racist ideas. So taken together, our story will include both examples of human progress and examples where humans failed to make progress.
Now, before we begin, let me give a brief background on where the series came from and how I plan to structure it. So, when I was a brand new faculty member at Baylor University, I was asked to teach a course that was the History and Systems of Psychology course for clinical psychology graduate students. And at the time, it was a course that I really did not want to teach because it seemed like a rather dry topic. But I was new and really had no choice. Now initially, I taught this course straight out of a textbook, and indeed it seemed dry. But then, over the course of about 20 years or so, I began adding context. I added context about the history of racism, and I added context about systems of power within the history of the United States, and I added context about the history of science and medicine. And the more context I added, the more the course seemed to become interesting and important and the more I enjoyed teaching it. In addition, I began collecting pictures and illustrations related to the material. So eventually this course evolved to become this illustrated audiobook that I'm presenting here, The History of Psychology, Racism, and the United States. So essentially, I conceptualize this series this way. I conceptualize this as a series that will cover the historical information that is valuable to know if you are someone who wants to help other people. So, it is on one hand a history of psychology, medicine, and science, and at the same time it is a history of things we need to know to make us more culturally sensitive. Now, at the bottom of the screen you see a few things I note about the way I plan to structure this series. So, first of all, this history will focus mostly on the United States. We could cover many parts of the world and many points in time, but I'm going to focus mostly on the United States, and I'm going to cover the span of time starting from around the Revolutionary War and then continue through about 1970. Also note, this series will be organized chronologically by decades. And so, each chapter will cover a different decade in the history of psychology racism, and the United States. Now, because this series is, in part, a history of psychology, let's begin with a short quiz to see how much you already know about the history of psychology. So, first question, true or false? Sigmund Freud could be reasonably regarded as the first psychologist. What do you think? Is that true or false? Well, that would be false. Sigmund Freud was not a psychologist, he was a medical doctor, and he never claimed to be a psychologist. And in fact, when Sigmund Freud was publishing his ideas, psychology had already been established as a new discipline. So, who was the first psychologist? Well, for that you'll have to wait and see. Let's look at our second question here. Second question, true or false? When clinical psychology was first introduced as a new profession, clinical psychologists focused mostly on providing psychotherapy to people with mental disorders. Is that true or false? What do you think? Well, that would be false. When clinical psychology was first introduced as a new profession, clinical psychologists did not provide psychotherapy to people with mental disorders. Now today, that's a very common thing for a clinical psychologist to do. But when a clinical psychologist was first started, they did something different. They did something else. What do you think that was? Well, for that, you will have to wait and see. Let's look at the next question. Our next question is this. It has to do with something called behaviorism. And behaviorism was a dominant psychological theory uh, in the United States in the early 1900s. And we'll talk a bit about behaviorism in our history. So true or false, behaviorism was a movement that began with sex scandals. Is that true or false? Well, that would be true. And what were those sex scandals? Well, for that, you'll have to wait and see. Let's look at our next question. Next question is this. It has to do with William James, and William James could be considered the first psychologist in the United States. He wasn't the very first psychologist in the world, but in the United States, he, he could be considered the first psychologist. So here's a question about William James. 
So true or false, before William James began teaching at Harvard, his college education included 10 years of aimless erratic work with his only completed degree coming from a one year medical program. Is that true or false? Well, that would be true. Uh, William James uh, had a very interesting life and we will talk about William James later on in our history. And I have one more question for you. Go to our next question. Our final question is this. It's about Carl Rogers. Carl Rogers was a clinical psychologist. He was a psychotherapist uh, that became famous for his theory that therapists need to express unconditional positive regard to their clients. Very influential in theories of psychotherapy. So this is a question about Carl Rogers, that famous psychotherapist. So true or false, Carl Rogers did several things that were unscrupulous and highly unethical. Is that true or false? Well, that would be true. And what were those things that were unscrupulous and highly unethical? Well, of course, for that, you'll have to wait and see.